Please welcome the Lord Chancellor and Secretary of State for Justice, Brandon Lewis. Conference, it is brilliant to be back with you here in Birmingham. It's always a time that I enjoy and one that I look forward to, as I know so many of you do. It's a time for us to come together as one Conservative family to reaffirm our common cause. And I'm joined today by my brilliant new ministerial team who are here with us as well. Rachel McLean, Mike Freer, Rob Butler, Gareth Johnson and our PPSs, Aaron Bell and Gareth Bacon, working alongside me with our Lords Minister, Lord Bellamy. And thank you to all of them for being here and the great work they are already doing in the Ministry of Justice. <laughs> our conference, our party has a long and proud history. And it's a party that has had that pride around our determination to deliver freedom and opportunity. We have an unwavering belief in integrity and individualism, supported by a robust and unapologetic approach to law and order, public safety and sound stewardship of the economy. Britain is known as a bastion of law and order, and it's why people invest here as well. Safety and security for ourselves, for our families, at home, in our neighbourhoods, in our schools and our shops, is the bedrock that allows economic growth to flourish. Public safety means peace of mind. It means safer streets and healthier communities. It means local investment and economic opportunity. It's these priorities of safety, of security and of stability for everyone in every community, in every corner of our country, that we as Conservatives hold dear. At the forefront of that effort are some true hidden heroes. They are the hidden heroes of our society, many of whom are the backbone of our criminal justice system. Our prison and probation staff. They work hard, so hard, every single day to keep the public safe. To keep us all safe from the most serious and prolific offenders in society. Our dedicated courts and tribunal staff who enable justice to be done in courtrooms across the length and breadth of our country join that team. And it's not just the system that matters, it's the people. Now this has been a tough time for our country and the criminal justice system is no different. So we cannot shy away from that. We have to face down those difficulties so that we can do what we are always focused on doing guarantee victims and survivors the access to justice that they deserve. And as your Lord Chancellor and Justice Secretary, I can promise you, I will do just that. Yeah. Now, like many of our public services, the judicial system was hit hard by the pandemic. Our courts were closed and justice was therefore delayed and a backlog of cases built up. Now we've got through the pandemic. Now I'm determined that we get through those backlogs. I want to make sure that everyone has swift access to justice, whoever they are and wherever they are from. Our justice system should never be, we will not let it be, a lottery. And that's why I've already taken action to address those backlogs. Now while there are many challenges uh, that have contributed to that backlog, the key to unlocking our clogged up courts will be ending the barrister's strike over legal aid fees. <clears throat> that strike action has had a devastating impact on victims and justice has been delayed in too many cases. That's why in my first few days as Lord Chancellor, I met the Criminal Bar Association. And last week, we proposed a comprehensive new package, one that I hope will bring a swift end to the strike. We have to end the revolving door of industrial action, ending a cycle of brinkmanship. We have to ensure, all of us, that we are putting the criminal justice system on a more sustainable footing for the long term. We owe that to victims. Now, that will also allow cases to be heard more quickly for the benefit of all. 
including victims of some of the most horrific crimes, like rape and serious sexual violence. We are overhauling the way that rape and sexual abuse victims are supported through the whole criminal justice system, so that more cases can come to court and more predators are put behind bars. A conference we have made some good progress on this. Convictions are up by two thirds on 2020 and they're up by a quarter compared to before the pandemic hit. But I made no bones about it, we have a lot more to do. I'm determined that we do that. And the government has set out some clear actions already for the police, prosecutors and our courts to make sure that more rapists are convicted and are put away. We have invested significantly in support for victims and survivors as well, meaning that more support is there for victims when they first report a crime and more support when their case gets to court. We want to reduce the trauma that's involved in the trial process and improve the quality and reliability of the evidence that courts see as a result of that. For example, victims of rape and serious sexual offences can now pre-record their evidence ahead of trial avoiding that additional trauma of testifying in a courtroom in front of your accused attacker. We are also piloting the use of independent advisors to guide people through what can be a very difficult and daunting process. And we're boosting the accessibility of support with a new 24-7 rape and sexual abuse support helpline so that people can access the help they need whenever and wherever they need it. But conference, we all know that stamping out violence against women and girls does not, cannot, it must not end just at the prison gates. It cannot be right that transgender prisoners, when convicted of serious sexual offences, or those who have not had reassignment surgery are housed in a general women's estate. <laughs> Conference, this will end. We have a duty of care to all those behind bars. One case of a sex attack or inappropriate relationship formed with a female prisoner by a transgender inmate is one too many. And we've had too many in recent years. <laughs> Our management of trans prisoners will rely not just on common sense, but we will also work on capacity. If we need to expand our use of the specialist areas for trans prisoners to further protect women in prison, then we will do that. Indeed, as a government, we are committed to creating 20,000 new prison places across the whole of the system by the middle of this decade. And we'll deliver that as well, because prison must be about the punishment of the criminal and protection of the innocent first and foremost. Depriving people who have broken our laws of their liberties to guarantee the rest of us our cherished freedoms is part of what prison is there for. And thanks to our manifesto commitment to recruit 20,000 more police officers, we will be catching and punishing more criminals and preventing crime as we do it. I'm determined to ensure that our prisons keep up with that. But there is more that we need to do to divert people away from prison and away from a life of crime in the first place. We know that hardened career criminals are not born. Sadly, they're made. We will avoid putting some of those convicted of more low-level offences onto that conveyor belt by expanding our world-leading GPS tagging project for neighbourhood crime, targeted at burglars, robbers and thieves who can be a scourge of our communities and our neighbourhoods. This compulsory electronic monitoring and close supervision will mean that police and our probation officers are able to keep an even closer eye on them when they leave prison. Their whereabouts will be known 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with the ability to impose robust restrictions or, where necessary, effective house arrest. We will maximise our use of new technology, technology like the GPS tracking, to reduce crime 
and protect the public from those neighbourhood thugs who too often blight our communities. In doing so, we will reduce crime and play our part in deterring and ending reoffending for more people. These are common sense solutions to sadly all too common problems. This government will also ensure that the very worst offenders are locked up for longer. And our new prison places will be vital in helping us do just that and give a clear message to criminals in society that they will be punished, they will serve time and our prisons will be there to house them. Those who commit the most heinous crimes and who commit those in a way that continue to be a threat, all of them must be punished and the public need to know that they will be protected from them. The guarantee of public protection must be the overriding factor in our parole decisions as well, so that we can secure the rightful confidence of both the victims and the public. Now to do that, I will make sure that the parole board is more accountable and more transparent about the decisions that are made. Just this week, we are due to have the first ever public parole hearing after we reformed the process earlier this year. And that is a big and a good positive step forward. These reforms to the parole process will all play their part in boosting public protection and confidence, improving transparency and accountability, better supporting the victims of some of the country's most horrendous crimes. Better supporting victims and survivors must also mean reducing reoffending, more effective rehabilitation. Prisoners need to ensure that we are making sure that they appreciate the value of hard work and personal responsibility to have a chance to rebuild their lives and play their part in society when they leave prison. That means that those who have been in prison pay them back into their communities and the country's coffers. It's based on the simple principle of fairness, something we can all embrace. And we will do our part. We will equip prisoners with the training and the skills they need to become active participants in the jobs market. We are and have just introduced new legislation to allow prisoners to take up apprenticeships whilst behind bars for the first time so that those prisoners can help build communities whilst rebuilding their own lives. <laughs> Conference, these apprenticeships will give them the skills that they need to get onto the jobs market, to get jobs on release and to pay their own way. Now we know across our economy that we cannot tax our way to growth. We have to make sure that we are creating the, the, the conditions for the economy to thrive. Our legal services industry is full of opportunities for growth. It is already worth a positive surplus of £29 billion to the UK economy. It employs over 350,000 people and it is the foundation for over £250 billion worth of international mergers and acquisitions. Thanks to our values, our belief in the rule of law, our traditions and our history, we are the world's council and the world's courtroom. English law is recognised around the globe. And I will work to promote our exceptional legal services industry to the world and to see it recognised as part of our new post-Brexit free trade agreements. The critical importance of our whole justice system to our country cannot be overstated. It underpins all that we do, all that we achieve, all that we believe in. It impacts everyone, everywhere. I take that responsibility to safeguard and sustain that very seriously. Because I know it means peace of mind for all of us and the people we serve. It defines our quality of life. Our justice system is the foundation of what makes Britain great. And it is the envy of the world. For Great Britain is truly great when we have safe streets, healthy neighbourhoods and thriving communities. That is what we as Conservatives believe in. It's what we strive for. And Conference, 
is what this Conservative Government will deliver. Thank you.